Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I am going to go through a few Timu cycling products that I ordered because I thought I'd be the guinea pig and let you know if you should spend on the bigger name brand stuff or if the cheap stuff is just as good. So let's go ahead, open this thing up and see what we got. First things first, I do want to mention I live in the very center of the United States and the shipping to get this to me was really, really fast. I was quite impressed with it. So shipping speed is not a bad thing at all. Gets to you fairly quickly. This is freshly opened. I have not looked and seen any of this stuff, so these are my 100% uh, first genuine impressions of what we have here. And just to make mention, I did actually need these products, so this is something that um, I will hopefully get quite a bit of use out of. So first things first, we have winter shoe covers. If you saw my last video, you'll know that I've been doing a lot more bike commuting, so having the appropriate uh, weather specific equipment is going to make my life a whole lot better. So I went ahead and ordered an insulated set of shoe covers. So first impressions, they look fairly nice. Stitching looks pretty robust. They might be a challenge, I think, to slip on because they have no center strap like my Castelli ones do. So, just for comparison's sake, here are the ones that I've been using, which are my Castelli OutDry shoe covers, and I have had these things for many years, and they're starting to get a little bit worn out, as you can see. Right in there, it's a little bit split. And the front has a wear hole through it. So, um, they still work, and I still wear them. Uh, but you know, they're, they're getting pretty bad. Plus these are purely a weatherproof and windproof option. Whereas the Timu ones are actually lined. They're fleece lined for a little bit of extra warmth. So let's go ahead, bring in a little bit closer so you can see what I see. All right, so these do have kind of like a neoprene stretchy type material. This material on the Castellis is not very stretchy at all. So hopefully that means getting these on and off are gonna be a little bit uh, better. Um, it does have a little pull cord on the back to help you get it on there. And it does look like the zipper is um, as weatherproof as it can be made. Got a little extra support back here and a grippy front which is actually pretty thick up here. But this is not a longevity video, so I can't really comment on that. And as you can see, full uh, lining in there, and this is a much, much thicker material. As is the challenge of these uh, shoe covers, uh, from overseas that I've had in the past. Putting them on is super difficult and sometimes impossible because the proportions are just not made correctly. So let's go ahead, give that a test. This looks like it might be tough to put on. Wow, that is impressive. I am super happy with how that fits. Really stretchy, covers up the shoe really well. Zipper is not difficult at all to get on, yet it's still form-fitting. 
I'm pretty happy with that. All right. So, uh, for as cheap as these are, they were about $22 shipped to me compared to what a set of Castellis like these are that are way more difficult to put on. Uh, these are about 80 or 90 bucks a pair. So my verdict on these, without testing uh, actually how they are in the weather or durability, I'd say these are a buy. Not a bust. All right, so next up on the list, keeping with the commuting theme, I have another winter cap. And this is again, nice and thermal lined. Uh, this cost about $5, so super, super inexpensive. It has uh, slots for your uh, sunglasses to go in. Looks like it's form fitted. Let's go ahead and just put this on here. It actually fits really well. Covers down to the bottom of the ears. That's pretty impressive. And of course the slots for the sunglasses and a pretty thick thermal lining. So far this looks pretty good. But just like with the shoe covers, I do have brand names of these. So let's go ahead and bring those out for comparison. All right, so again, um, Castelli is typically my brand of choice. And that is what I have for a thermal winter cap that I use for commuting. So let's go ahead, slip this on and see how this one looks. This one also, Fits really well, comes down. This one is just a flat round, it's not formed, so it does kind of come down up over my eyebrows without being brought up the way that this one is. This one does not have the slots for the sunglasses, which is not normally a big deal because I usually keep them around anyway. Um, but the biggest thing that I can tell right off the bat is the material on this one the uh, Timu version is considerably thicker. So I think that that may actually work out really well for winter commuting when it gets down into the below freezing temperatures that we get fairly frequently where I'm at. Right, so you can see maybe this one has a stitched bottom on it. This one does not. One of the things I've noticed with this one is that it will actually ride up a little bit. Maybe with this having a tighter uh, elastic band, maybe it won't ride up quite so much. I'm not sure exactly how well this will show up on the camera, but the stitching on this one is noticeably less intricate and in-depth than this one is on the Castelli here. So my initial impression verdict on the $5 and change cycling cap versus the $25 to $30 cycling cap, I would say this one is a buy. not a bust. So third on our list of products today, I have a very simple bike tool, uh, multi-tool that I'd like to keep in my commuter's cycling bag um, so that I have one for each of my bikes. Let's go ahead and take a look in here. Okay. does have a chain tool on it, which looks a little strange. All right, so for comparison's sake, I have my trusty Bontrager that I've had for 
many, many years now. I think this was around $10 when I purchased it several years ago. This one, for comparison, was only about $2 and some change. So significantly cheaper, about one fifth of the price. And this one does have a few options that this one does not. For example, the chain breaker here, um, which can come important when you are out and about. This one is typically with me when I'm out on my race bike for training purposes. So lightweight is important for that. On my commuter bike, not so much. Let's go ahead and look at some of the options here. Looks like for most of the Allens, we have comparables here. This I don't quite understand. It has these two attached together on the same one. I just, I don't see how you're gonna be able to use this one with this one right here. So uh, yeah, that's not really a good design in my opinion. On this side, we have the standard Phillips, Torx, a couple other Allen sizes, and a flat. We've got on the Von Traeger, of course, the flat Phillips and Torx. But we also have the, I believe, 8mm, which is actually usable on this one, as opposed to the 8mm, which is definitely not usable on this one. You can see all out of order here. So I don't like how it just has those all mixed in every which way. Uh, chain breaker does feel pretty flimsy. I'm not sure exactly what this tool is. Maybe that's supposed to be a tire lever? I don't know. If you know, drop down in the comments there because I'm curious. All right. So overall on this, I don't really like the design of it. I don't like how some of the tools are the way they are in there. So for me, I would say this one is going to be my first bust. Definitely don't buy this one. Get a little bit nicer of one. Um, and you can pick these up with chain breakers on as well. I'm sure they're going to be laid out a whole lot better than this jumbled mess. Will this work? Probably so. But I mean, it's just a bunch of steel here, so it shouldn't be too terrible to use. Um, but the layout is just not very good. So bust on this one. All right, last up on our list of cheap Timu cycling products to look at today, I have a set of sunglasses. Now, I am very much the type that likes nice sunglasses. I have my Roka SL1X here. I also have a set of Oakley radars. My Rokas here, I have two different lenses for the one that you have, or the one that you see right now is the photochromic lens, the one that shifts based on the light outside. I swear by these for commuting because a lot of times when you are out in the uh, early morning when it's dark out, you want a nice clear lens on. And then when you come home with the sun shining, Later in the afternoon, you want something that's going to tint in the sunlight without having to carry your extra lenses or your uh, you know, two sets of sunglasses or something like that. And these lenses were $110 as accessory lenses. And on Timu, I picked up a full set of sunglasses that are photochromic. And these cost just a little bit over $5. And can't say that I care too much for the design of them. They're kind of like uh, Oakley Jawbreakers, I think. But they definitely, uh, wow, they, they look awful on me <laughs> first. But primarily, I wanted them for the photochromic effect and because when I cycle to and from work, I don't want to have to worry about taking extra care of my sunglasses, um, the nice ones that cost lots of money. 
So having an inexpensive pair that I can use for commuting in all weather um, is certainly a good thing for me. Uh, but overall, they are very plasticky, very cheap feeling. But at the end of the day, if the photochromic works, they cover my eyes, they're gonna serve the purpose. They are a bit wide though. Um, so anyway, let's bring in, let's take a closer look. All right, so we got these all set up side by side. Of course, differing styles here. The style is one purely of personal preference, but I just do wanna highlight some of the differences here. And the biggest thing here is these just really feel cheap and plasticky. The nose piece, while is soft, but it's right up next to the plastic piece. So hopefully your nose won't reach that, but if it does, that could be quite uncomfortable. Whereas if you take a look on the Oakleys here, you can see it doesn't butt up next to it. It's got some, some distance in there to keep your nose stood off of that plastic. And these just feel so much more premium um, than the knockoff versions here. You can also see it has big giant uh, screws on the ends, whereas the Oakleys have little tiny more precision ones. The Rokas, again, the mechanisms just feel so nice. And this one actually, the rubber piece passes all the way through here, so it's a whole lot better than having your nose right up against plastic. But let's go ahead, take this set outside and see exactly how that photochromic lens works out. All right, let's go ahead and give this a test and see how long it takes to actually darken. Super bright so far. And we'll see. It's got a very smooth transition. Wow, darkens up pretty quick. Not super dark, of course, as photochromics aren't. But overall, I'm pretty happy with these. So on that note, I'll go ahead and say these for $5 and change, as opposed to 110 plus for uh, photochromic lenses elsewhere, these are definitely a buy. And on that note, we'll catch you on the next video. Until then, enjoy your ride.